players? Does that system work for him? Are they executing? Does he have anybody around him? Can the defense focus on him? Is he getting double teamed? All of that is complicated. All of that takes time. All of that is work. It's easy to say somebody sucks. That's why people do it. Takes no brain power, takes no thought, takes no creativity, takes no damn uh, research, takes none. All you have to do is say he sucks. You don't got to back it up. You just move on. And when he plays well, you act like he never said it. That's the full letter network's technique. But I digress. When I'm looking at the draft and I'm looking at the rest of these running backs, I see a Dalvin Cook. I think he's better. Leonard Fournette, I think is better. Joe Mixon is better. Sam Perrine out of Oklahoma is better. Deontay Foreman out of Texas is better if you watch them play. A team didn't have anything else. I think Alvin Kamara or Kamara or Kamara out of Tennessee is better. I know, I know that um, Dixon is better. I have no doubt in my mind that Dixon is better. Uh, and there's, there's so many, uh, well, I'm saying Mixon, excuse me. But there are a host of other, Marlon Mack is better to me. Connor's better. Williams is better. Jamal Williams is better. Wayne Gallman out of Clemson is a better running back in the pros. Even Hunter's better in my eyes. There are probably at least 8 to 10 running backs you can look at if you looked at their production and looked at them play over their college careers that are better than Christian McCaffrey, but they're not even looked at. They're not getting talked about. So my thing about fantasy draft is the same thing with the mainstream media. It's the same way with the way they cover it. They just, they don't care about accomplishments. They don't care about what you get done. They don't necessarily care about the player. All they care about is who they want to promote. They could care less that he wasn't productive last year. They could care less that usually running backs his size that come out of Stanford, that come out of the Pac-12, quite frankly, if you paid attention to running backs that have come out of there recently. White running backs, quite frankly, they've always kind of fizzled. They've always been able to find some kind of niche in the Pac-12 because of the schedule, because of the lack of defense, because of the particular teams they play against that aren't necessarily that good. They're able to uh, draft numbers. If you go back to, God, I might have can't remember his name. What is, um, uh, played for Minnesota for a minute. What was his damn name? Start with a T. I can't remember his damn name, man. Uh, you know, one of the fair weather white running backs that came out, it was pretty good. He played in the Pac-12. I think he, uh, he might have won Stanford. I cannot remember his damn name. That's terrible radio. Let me keep it pushing. But there have been a couple of running backs that have come out of that conference that didn't necessarily translate to the next level. And really, he hasn't shown anything really over the last season to say that he would transfer to that level. But he's given, given he's being given that benefit of doubt. He's being given that go ahead. If you watched all season, there was um they had a Heisman watch. If you watched all year in the bottom left hand corner of your screen, they always had Christian McCaffrey in the bottom corner flexing. He was always in the bottom corner just flexing, you know, and they always said Heisman watch. And, you know, you can somewhat understand that for games that he was in, but no, they did that. It didn't matter who was playing. They had Christian McCaffrey in the bottom saying Heisman watch. Nobody else. Not Deshaun Watson, somebody that went to the championship game before he actually came in third, if you can believe. They, he came in third behind two running backs, which never happens in Heisman voting if you've actually paid attention over the years. Quarterback always gets the benefit of a doubt. Not in this particular case. But, Every game, they were promoting him. Even, you know, usually when a team loses or the running back doesn't have a good game, he falls out of the Heisman race. Christian McCaffrey had three or four average games on the road, maybe five, and he still was in the Heisman race. They still kept that thing going. Anytime anybody has a bad game as a running back or your team loses, especially if you lost a couple of games, you're out of it. It just didn't happen for him. The whole time, he was still viable. He was still viable until Stanford lost, I think, two games, maybe three, where they had to take him out. And then I think he might have ended up getting hurt or something to that effect. So because he got hurt, you know, at one point they, they had to, they had to you know, let it go at that damn point. But before that, they were doing everything in their power to keep him in the race. And it's the same thing now. He doesn't really project to be the better running back. Not all those people I've named. If you're talking about running backs on the next level, you're talking about Dalvin Cook, Leonard Fournette, Joe Mixon, Sam Perrine, Deontay Foreman, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt, Wayne Gallman, Jamal Williams, Donald Pumley, James Conner, Jeremy Nicholas, uh, Elijah McGuire, Marlon Mack. All of our running backs all actually made it through the season. So there's room to say that all these guys project to be better at the next level, but they're not getting that coverage. If you look at any article, I saw one article that says he's projected to be the best running back in the draft. No, no, not only that. He's projected to be the top threat in the draft. Literally. Christian McCaffrey is so good and he's so versatile, he might be the best option at offense in the draft. Better than Deshaun Watson, a man that threw for over 400 yards against Alabama. Sorry, 3 through 3, 3, 3 Alabama boy. A man that threw for over 400 yards against Alabama, two damn years straight, tearing up the best defense in the country. Almost won a championship the first year. Second year, pulled it off. Great season both times. Numbers better the second season than the first, even though you would have never known by the coverage he was getting. And you're telling me Christian McCaffrey might be the best offensive weapon in the draft? You got Deontay Foreman, a guy on the team that did nothing but run the ball. Everybody knew he was going to get it, yet he still dominated. 
And you're talking to me about Christian McCaffrey, a guy that wasn't even healthy for most of the season, that put up average numbers. From a production standpoint, it doesn't hold water. But it doesn't matter when it comes to the coverage, which is always slanted and crooked in the draft. So one of the segments, one of the things I'm going to be going through is how in the draft, it doesn't matter really what a guy does. They have certain people they want to promote. And in this instance, it's Christian McCaffrey for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. So as you're looking at the draft and looking at the running backs coming out, possibly, possibly because of coverage, they might pick up a Christian McCaffrey early, but teams that are actually looking to be productive that aren't trying to waste their pick, it's going to be a while before he gets picking up because take picked up by anybody. Because if you actually look at it, he isn't even in the top six or seven running backs I would take if you're actually paying attention. The perception is that Christian McCaffrey is possibly the best offensive player in the draft and is one of the better running backs. In reality, the best offensive weapon in the draft is the national championship winning quarterback, Deshaun Watson. And Christian McCaffrey isn't even in the top 10 of the best running backs in the draft. It's funny how the running back position is devalued until the media's fantasy of a white running back is put before him. I appreciate everybody coming aboard. Let's take a ride. This is the Underground Railroad Show with that ninja on Spreaker.com, live from the Man Cave Studios, live on Spreaker.com as well. Also broadcasting for the first time on WSME. <laughs> appreciate the shout out, Doug Stewart. Appreciate it, man. All right, man. We're going to keep the train rolling as we normally do, man. Go through the uh, car, introduce everybody that has come aboard, get reaction to the open the ramp. Appreciate everybody coming aboard, man. That's how I like to start the show off with perception versus reality. And that dismount was a little jacked up, slight production error, but it's all good. Appreciate everybody coming aboard, man. Let's go ahead and get everybody introduced, get a little reaction, and uh, we're going to go from there, man. I appreciate everybody coming in, and uh, we're going to get into a little uh, mainly football today, man. Mainly football. Because that's really what I do, man. I'm a football cat, so I'm going to get into a lot of football, man. Not going to be a basketball-centric show. And uh, again, man, a uh, slightly different format, getting used to it, so I didn't send out the normal alerts that I usually get out. So my apologies to that. And again, man, I'd like to thank everybody that has come aboard and has let, it, let me uh, know that they're in here by being seen on the train and jumping in the chat room. Thank you to everybody that's listening and doesn't want to jump in. Thank you to everybody that's going to listen on demand after the fact. Got to make sure I remember to say that every show, man. Thank you all very much. Let's go ahead and get it started and introduce everybody that has come aboard. And I think I see some uh, VIP in here. Yeah, I do. And there he is right there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the attorney for Real Cash and that squad. Comes in dropping bombs. Always very knowledgeable. Always intelligent. Y'all know him as Sluggo the motherfucking hammer. Appreciate you coming aboard, Sluggo. Thanks for coming aboard, sir. Again, because of the format, I can't run this music off like I want to. It is what it is, though. Let me get a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Appreciate you coming aboard, sir. Thank you for coming aboard, Sluggo. Appreciate it, sir. Sluggo comes in there dropping bombs, wrecking the train. That's just what he does. Appreciate you coming aboard, sir. We got Miss Mocha Bella on the train. What's going on, Mocha Bella? Thank you very much for coming aboard. I appreciate it. Train car's not that full right now, man. I'll go ahead and introduce everybody like I normally do. I thought I might have an issue with that. Didn't want to take up too much time, but right now I think it'll be okay. Thank you for coming aboard, Mocha. Mocha Bella is a frequent contributor and supporter. I thank you very much for jumping on the train and uh, listening lately and contributing. I appreciate it, even though you keep a lot of jokes, too. But it's all good. Thank you very much for coming aboard. Thank you for being a uh, contributor and a frequent rider. And thank you for this drop that you so uh, nicely gave me. This is Mocha Bella. And when I'm not cheering for the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Heat, or the Miami Hurricanes, I'm riding on a train with that ninja. Appreciate you, Mocha Bella. Thank you very much for coming aboard. This is the Underground Railroad Show with that ninja on speaker.com. Going through the train car, pulling stubs, getting the reaction to the opening round. Then we're going to get into some football. A little bit of tournament talk. The game's going to get started. So, what, around 7, 8 Eastern, if I'm not mistaken? I'll adjust and check later. You can tell I'm not into basketball. And again, man, the reason why I'm not getting into that is because I'm not necessarily a basketball cat. I haven't really been watching it. I don't mind the game. I kind of like it, actually, but I haven't been watching it. I'm not, I'm not informed or knowledgeable on it, so I'm not going to sit here and fake bake it. So I'm going to do what I know, man, which is what I've looked into, which is football. That's what I'm going to do today, man. So uh, you know what it is. Ain't nothing wrong with that, though. 
Yeah. Living in Atlanta by way of Buffalo. Met him at TDSS2. Told me that the uh, show helped to keep him up on the way back from the crib. Cool brother, X Squad member, along with Sluggo. Got my main rough buff on the train. What's going on, sir? Appreciate you coming aboard. Appreciate you coming aboard, sir. We got my man Truck D on the train. Look out, Truck D. Appreciate you coming aboard, sir. Oh, before I forget, Rough Buff, Mocha, and Sluggo, all members of the X Squad. Shout out to the X Squad. Appreciate y'all coming aboard. We got my man Truck D on the train. Well, look out, Truck D. As always, with your favorite drop. Appreciate you coming aboard, sir. We got my man Big L on the train. Look out, Big L. Appreciate you coming aboard, Big L. Big L, man, has been supporting big time. I appreciate that, even though he's been trolling lately. Thank you for coming aboard, Big L. Gonna shoot on through this, man, so we can keep the show pushing. Big L says we need some sports talk. I got you, man. I got you. On this format, Mocha, I can't rock the music like I normally do. I'm not gonna get into, uh, yeah, Big L, I know the championship game tonight. I'll talk about it a little bit, but again, man, haven't been watching it. I can sit here and fake it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, big time game tonight, North Carolina versus Gonzaga, uh, traditional versus first timer, uh, David versus Goliath, blah, 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 all the stereotypical statements. I could do all that, but I ain't into it, man. We're gonna do what we do, man. You know what it is. We got Mrs. QT, Mrs. Ninja on the train. What's going on, QT? Everybody, give your proper respects, your hellos. Pay homage. Appreciate you coming aboard, QT. Driving and listening. Greetings and salutations as usual. Appreciate you coming aboard. From my man Sluggo, the... Motherfucking hammer. I bet the LA Rams wish they had a fantasy draft and could go back and not select Jared Goff. Everyone who touted him as a franchise quarterback should be banned from prognosticating on anything related to football. You better preach, sir. You better preach. Remember, Jerry Goff was first quarterback taken. Who was the best quarterback in the draft? Well, Mr. Dak Prescott. What did the media say? Like literally two weeks before his first game, which he played very well, by the way, as he did throughout the season. Do you know what the media said literally two weeks before his first game? Well, we, we, know, we, we already know he can't throw the ball. And I think it's going to take him at least a year to learn how to take a snap from center. He'll, he'll never be a starter, but maybe he'll be a backup. That's what they said about Dak Prescott after he was drafted. You never heard them say anything that negative about Jared Goff. He never did a damn thing. He never did shit. He didn't even start. He didn't even dress for a lot of the games. He couldn't take a damn snap from center, the very thing they accused Dak Prescott of not being able to do. It's just a matter of adjustment. At the end of the day, if you get me- if you uh, colonize, you get a pass. If you got melanin, they're getting your ass. Every damn year, they find some colonizer, put it at the top of the draft, and make the top draft pick, and it doesn't matter whether he pans out or not. When Cam Newton came out, they pulled Blaine Gabbard out of their ass. They had to find somebody. They will not let a ninja get the shine. Sean Watson, obviously the best quarterback, best player in the draft. They're not going to talk about him by himself. They're pulling everybody they can out of their ass, the Mitch Trubisky's of the world. They're not even talking about the real quarterbacks that can play. They're pulling out Trubisky's out of their ass. So, I mean, it is what it is. They do it every year, and this is just another example of it. And don't forget, Jared Goff was supposed to be that dude. He's supposed to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? And, and such is not the case. So, again, their prognostications, think about what they said about Dak Prescott. And it was obvious to anybody that actually watched Dak play and watched him play in college and show out and adjust and make passes, great throws, every throw, use his legs as well, be in control of that offense, and be a four-year starter in SEC West, the toughest conference in motherfucking football, but they still couldn't find anything positive to say about him. Cam Newton went undefeated for two years straight, and they still talking shit about him. Broke the rookie passing record, and they were saying that he needs to learn how to throw from the pocket. How? How is that possible? But that's what they do. At the end of the day, I said it once and I said it again, colonizers are either unwilling or unable to commentate black people properly, to police them properly, to report about them properly, or to have a non-biased opinion without their culture and or lack of understanding and or ignorance getting in the way. And I just feel that way because it's obvious if you look at the world before us and the way they report us in the news, the way the news covers black athletes, the way they treated a black president, it's obvious. It's not anything I'm making up. It's just the fact that I'm observing it. And it's obvious at this point they're incapable or unwilling or they just don't give a damn. Regardless, it's obvious that we're not going to get a fair shake. And the way they cover the draft and the way Christian McCaffrey is being pushed and they're downplaying all those other running backs I mentioned, it's just another example of that, man. It's a microcosm of society, in my opinion, at the end of the day. From a man Sluggo, best running back based on what criteria? 
they should